I'm Kim, the Abundant Traveler, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be sharing some top tips, maybe 10 to 12 tips about the things that you need to know before you go on the road to Hana. These tips will help make your trip much easier, more fun, more laid back, and it'll help you not to miss anything. It'll also help you not to stress out on your trip. First and foremost, you want to hire your own car, use a rental car, do not use one of the guides that way you can stop when you want to stop go where you want take whatever excursions or paths off stay as long as you want anywhere on the road to Hana my recommendation for a rental car is to get a small four-door car with a trunk the reason you have a trunk is to protect your valuables and the reason I say a small car in general is because parking is at a premium you're usually parking just off the side of the road. It's great to have a Jeep. It's a lot of fun to have a Jeep. If you want to have a Jeep, that's good too, but it doesn't have a trunk. Next, you want to fill up that rental car with gas. You want to have a full tank of gas when you are headed out on the road to Hana. There are no gas stations between uh, the main part of Maui and Hana in general, and there's only one gas station that I found in Hana. It was a Texaco. Secondly, you want to bring cash with you. Cash is king on the road to Hana. The only place that I saw where you could actually use a credit card is at the uh, past Hana when you go to the Haleakala National Park to go see the seven sacred pools. Everywhere else, I needed cash. I recommend that you get two different guides for the road to Hana. The first is the Gypsy app, which is a minute by minute GPS guide to everything you need to know on the road to and from Hana. One thing that is fantastic about it, it tells you exactly where you need to get off, what mile marker, what's there. It also gives you some excursions as well. Additionally, I recommend getting the book called Maui Revealed. Maui Revealed is an actual book. It looks like a lonely planet. And between the two of them, you get a great overview of everything that you need to do on the road to Hana. I think that the Gypsy app is a 1000% must. The Maui Revealed is a nice additive because it gives a different perspective on some of the sites that you will be seeing. The next thing is, what do you need to pack for your road to Hana trip? I recommend that you bring a cooler with you. If you didn't bring a collapsible cooler to Maui with you, I suggest you just go buy one of the styrofoam coolers. Bring some snacks, cold snacks, waters, definitely bring waters. Bring some sparkling water, Cokes, whatever you normally drink. I recommend bringing um, chips, cheese and crackers, those types of things. There are several places to stop along the way and pull off and enjoy a picnic. There's not a lot of restaurants except almost all the way to Hana. So if you get hungry, you have to bring your own. I also suggest that you bring some dry goods. Dry goods. Dry goods, I mean, bring some paper towels, bring a couple, you know, paper plates with you, and also bring some toilet paper. Yes, there are a few places to stop later on in the day. Those few places to stop and go to the bathroom, everybody else has always already been there. So there's no TP for you, so bring it with you. Just saying. As far as clothes, what to bring, shoes. Bring some flip-flops because you're just gonna wander around in flip-flops for a little bit. I would bring some type of hiking shoe as well. I brought my Chacos and it's been raining. So those were perfect hiking style shoes for all the hikes everywhere that I have been. You wanna bring true water shoes if you're not gonna use something like Chacos. Use your Keens or use some inexpensive water shoes with the, the rubber bottom. The rocks are super, super slick. If you're gonna go swimming in the different swimming holes along the way and underneath the waterfalls, you need some swim shoes as well. If you would like the complete list of everything you should take to Maui, make sure to go to the description below and click the link that says free packing guide. It shares swimming gear, hiking gear, road trips, mountains, volcanoes, 
and an extra tip if you're gonna go whale watching. I highly recommend that you do not do the road to Hana in one day. It is too much. It is a lot. It is going to take you basically all day to get from the main part of Maui to Hana and back. And if you want to see everything, the goal is to not be in a rush. Enjoy the ride. They keep saying the road to Hana is about the journey. It's not actually about the destination of Hana. So I recommend that you spend at least one night in Hana. And I think, you know, some of the guys say you need to spend two nights in Hana, but I really think that one night was enough. I stayed at a place called Joe's, and it was a sweet little sort of rural place to stay. I booked it on um, Airbnb. So if you want to do that, that's perfect. There are several places to get accommodation in Hana, but they fill up fast, so book early. There's only one place on the road to Hana that you need to make an advanced reservation. You cannot do same day. That is Wainapa Napa, and that is the Black Sand Beach. So you definitely want to book that in advance. It is $15 to go to the state park. Well worth it. The next thing is, is starting out on your trip. You want to start as early as possible. I left my condo at 6.30 in the morning and I was on the road to Hana by about 7.30. It is worth it. You want to get an early start. Even in Hana, I started out super early. I ended up with the early reservation, the 7 to 10 a.m. reservation for um, Wainapa Napa. And so I was up and out the door having been coffeed and ready to go. Uh, and I was at Wainapa Napa at um, 7, about 7.30. So it's early, early days and it's long days. Also, if you get motion sickness in a car, you are going to want to either drive or drive and take Bonine. Don't take Dramamine because that'll make you drowsy and you'll miss everything. But definitely bring your Bonine with you. Also, clothes in general that you want to bring. Just bring your bathing suit and a bathing suit that does not fall off in the water because the currents are really strong, the waterfalls are really strong, the ocean is really, really strong on this side. So be careful about your swimming and bring a bathing suit that does not get washed off when the waves crash over you. As far as clothes, I am just wearing shorts and a t-shirt both days, change of underwear, super simple, no big deal. Um, you do not need a lot of clothes on this trip. Do not think that you can make it on the wet side of Maui in the tropical area and the sort of rainforest area without a raincoat. I have been here for two days. It has rained two days straight. I have probably had about four hours of sunshine. So just to let you know, never know what to expect when you're over here on this side of Maui. Also, there is lots of hiking to be had. So definitely bring a day pack with you. Also bring a beach towel with you because of swimming. Also, the rain has been terrible and it's been nice to have a beach towel to dry off. So if you'd like more details about the road to Hana, sort of the ultimate guide to Hana, I have a full length um, film that I did for my two days that shows all of the tips, tricks, hacks, also some of my favorite sites. My favorite site, just to let you know in this short video, is Naihiku. It is not recommended necessarily to go off the Gypsy app, and it doesn't say much in Maui Revealed, but I decided to take a detour down there, and it was my favorite thing that I did on the entire trip. So Naihiku, when you can make the turn off down the 10 minutes down to the water, definitely I recommend that. So the road to Hana is pretty strenuous. The driving is you have to be on your mark all of the time. There are 600 and something turns. There are like 60 bridges. You really have to be paying attention. A lot of the, the road, it's one lane. So you have to pay attention to the other cars. Parking is on the side of the road. So you have to pay attention again to other cars. Um, there's 
there's so much hiking, there's so many waterfalls, there's so much to do. It is a pretty strenuous day. So plan ahead, get a good night's rest before you head out. After you get to Hana, I recommend that you uh, drop off your stuff at your accommodation, go eat as early as possible. There are some food trucks that are in Hana. The thing is about the food trucks is when they run out of food, that's when they close. So some days they'll close at 6 p.m., other days they will close at 7.30. So I recommend that you don't spend any time in your accommodation. You go immediately back out and go get some food for dinner. The last thing I recommend you do on your first night to culminate your road to Hana is go to Hamoa Beach. It is absolutely beautiful. It is fantastic, fantastic to go spend the last hour of sunlight down in Hamoa Beach. And the final tip I have for you on this road to Hana is you will not have cell phone service. Let your friends and family know that you will not have cell phone service the entire day that you are gone. You do have a little bit of cell phone service in Hana and then not again until you get back to the main part of Maui. So I hope that you enjoyed this short video with some know before you go and top tips for going to the road to Hana in Maui. Let me know if you have any other great tips as well. I'm always open to new tips. Also, if you would like to know everything to get started on the road to Hana and have a little bit more time, make sure to watch my entire documentary on the road to Hana. So I am Kim, the Abundant Traveler, and I will see you on the next road trip adventure in some exotic location like Maui. Cheers. Lots of traffic and lots of rain. So I can't imagine why this is its own structure and right next to the restrooms. Must monsoon here on a regular basis.